this is this is this was incredibly profound to me and I wanted to record it. This is by Daniel Quinn. And this is the first two paragraphs I read of this book. So yesterday a teenager sent me an email letter in which he said I feel cheated that it's all up to me. By being in the younger generation, I have to save the world before I can even begin in building a life for myself, and there will be nothing to build my life on. Quinn says, I think this is a profound statement, and a statement of profound importance to this particular audience. I've known several generations of kids your age, and I can tell you that feeling cheated is something new, and something new is always worth paying attention to. The kids of my own generation didn't feel treated, cheated, we felt terrified. We grew up in the coldest part of the Cold War, cowering in the shadow of the H-bomb, expecting at any moment to see the world come to an end in a nuclear holocaust. All we knew was that we had to get down to the business of getting as much of the good life as we could before the end came. We were the silent generation, and all we wanted was to get out there and get a job, a career, a marriage, a family, a house, and the suburbs squeezing in as much as we could before it all went up in smoke. The kids of the 60s and 70s didn't feel cheated. They were just fed up with their parents' idea that the best life was the one the silent generation was struggling to get. The job, the career, the marriage, the family, the house in the suburbs, they wanted to live, to have fun, and to hell with the goddamn H-bomb. Carl feels cheated, he says, because it's all up to him. If you haven't yet been told that it's all up to you, believe me, you will be. Of course, this business of it all being up to you is pretty standard commencement day rhetoric. Every commencement day speaker worth his or her salt has got to say, one way or another, the future is in your hands. Today, the torch patches from one generation to the next. Blah, blah, blah. This in itself is not new. I heard the same goddamn thing when I was your age. But it meant something different when I heard it. It really was just commencement day rhetoric back then. Nowadays, it means something different. Nowadays, it means something like this. My generation, my parents' generation, and their parents have really screwed things up here, and that's no joke. I can't even bring myself to look at the latest World Watch Institute estimate of how much time we have left to turn this around before we head down a slide from which no recovery is possible. It was 40 years ago the last time I did have the nerve to look, and that was about 10 years ago. It was 40 years, 10 years ago. What does this figure mean? It doesn't mean human extinction is in 40 years. It means we have 40 years to find a path for ourselves. And if we let those 40 years go to waste and just can't go on the way we are, the momentum that is carrying us forward to extinction will be too great to overcome. So that date is not the end of it all. It's just the point of no return, irreversible. And I got two thoughts on that. Uh, first of all, I would call that the event horizon because I know like black holes and stuff. And, the event horizon is that point of no return. You're not in the black hole yet, but you're already past the point where you are so doomed. Uh, second, I don't, I don't know how you quantify how anybody who hasn't seen the end of multiple worlds can say, this world, well, it's past the breaking point. It's going to end 40 years. I mean, it's going to be past the reversible point in 40 years. 